and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we have the Pirate Cove tutorial video for you. So I hope you enjoy making this. I certainly loved making it and ever since I finished it I have loved wearing it and I keep going back to it to wear it when I go out on those sort of summer evenings but with a little bit of a wind so it's always nice just to cover up for that evening walk And what do you need? So I used six balls of Starcraft Special Aran. It's a little bit thicker than DK. There are 196 meters on the ball and you use a five millimeter hook. So I am indeed going to use a five millimeter hook because I want to have that little sort of more chunky look. Also, what else you need are buttons. So I got these toggles here, which look like wood, and I thought that was a really nice effect. And of course, you need a darning needle, not only to sew in your ends, but also, of course, to uh, attach your toggles and your scissors. So the way we're going to make this is actually we are going to make a rectangle but we're going to do very long rows but only a few of them okay and we are not even going to count our stitches i have no idea how many stitches i did for this project okay there is a way of working it out which i will explain to you now so we are going to do very, very long rows. You do have to measure your rows. So get your tape measure out because we are going to start with chaining until you have about one meter 60 centimeters in chain. Okay, so let's start and do a slip knot. Insert your hook and just start chaining. There's no need to count. Just start chaining and keep measuring, I would say. But once you get to 160 centimeters, come and see me again. Okay, so now my chain reaches 160 centimeters. But in reality, I want my piece of fabric my shawl to be about 175 centimeters 177 so this amount is where we are going to allow for the chain to stretch okay so you need to take about 10 15 centimeters off the amount that you uh, want to achieve then what you are going to do I still haven't counted my chains okay then what you're going to do is you are going to do your turning chain so you Keep your hand or your eye or your thumb on that last stitch there. You do one, two chains. That's your turning chain or your very first double crochet. Then you yarn over and in the one, two, three, in the fourth stitch, so the one before the last one, you are going to start doing double crochets. Okay, just start doing double crochets and again keep measuring so now you go back over your chain picking up one loop and then having the two at the back you do double crochets nearly to the end of your chain you will find that when you end your chain your work will no longer be 160 centimeters it will have grown okay and when your work has reached about 170, 173, 175, something like that, you are going to stop doing your double crochets and you are going to see how many stitches you still have left on your chain. Okay, so you should have about five, six, maybe two or three chains left, right? Now, 
this is when you will do some counting okay but it's going to be very very simple so let me just do my sample piece here because as you have probably worked out I am doing a sample piece okay so I now have reached about there okay now is when we count this is the only time you will have to count in this whole project what we are going to count is the stitch repeat so the stitch repeat the stitch multiple in this project is three so all you need to do is count one two three 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 okay so that is a multiple of three my stitches my uh, design is going to work out I don't need to know how many I've got that's fine okay now you're going to add one stitch for the side another stitch for the side for the other side of course and that's it and these two here that I have left over um, obviously I've just done this you know on a sample piece so if you have any left over here just undo them or you know get rid of them in one way or another so let me just show you how to do that because people might be wondering so this is how you're just going to undo these last few stitches yeah see this is the last one there we go and you close it off nobody's going to know that we're going to sew this in and that's it okay so you know you have your stitch repeat and one stitch on each side so one stitch on the side here one stitch on the side and then here one two three 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 and one two three okay so that is going to work out so this basically is our bottom border of our poncho now we are going to get started with the first row of our repeat and I have put the stitches together in such a way that you do not need to count, you do not need to think about it too much because it just works out. So this is row number two and you are doing three chains. This is your turning chain and one chain for the stitch repeat already. So you turn and then we are going to do two double crochets together over three stitches. So yarn over into the first stitch there, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. You stop there, you yarn over again, skip one stitch into the third stitch, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. So now we have done sort of two parts of our double crochet together. But now we have to put them together. So you yarn over and you finish your stitch by pulling through the three loops on your hook. Chain two. This brings us to the next three stitches where we are going to do the same thing. Two double crochets together over three stitches. There we go. See? Chain two. Same thing again. And this way, you don't have to count about, you know, skipping or whatever, you know, makes it sort of a logical stitch to do on top of this row of double crochets. There we go. See? Okay, then at the end of the row, of course, you keep going. Two chains. You do your two double crochets together. Then here, you know you have that end stitch to do. So you do your one chain and you do a double crochet on that end stitch wherever you can sort of get into it sensibly. There we go. Okay, because you need to make a side. So this is row number two and that is the first row of your stitch repeat. Now we're going to do row number three. So chain two turn 
and you're going to put one double crochet into the chain space here and then in between every chain space so into every chain two space that you have along your row you are going to do three double crochets so again not much thinking involved in this row plus also you know what else would you do in this row so it's sort of it's logic to do three double crochets into the chain spaces this is how I built up this pattern so you could just sort of you know work out from the row before what would be the most logical thing to do here and let's just do it and then of course here you do your two double crochets so one for the chain and one for the border there we go okay of course I am only doing very short rows but that way you can see really clearly what you're supposed to be doing your rows will be much much longer but the thing is I think not knowing the amount of stitches has helped me enormously and I wasn't worried about it I was just doing it so chain two turn this row we're doing the v-stitch we are going to place the v-stitch in between the clusters from the previous row so yarn over insert in between the clusters double crochet chain one and another double crochet in that same location next location double crochet chain one and another double crochet in there and that way you go all along your line and of course you don't have to count because you can see where you're going to put your next v-stitch double crochet chain one double crochet when you get to the end you do one in that last location and of course then you're going to have to do one on that border here into yeah get into a logical location there and you do your last double crochet of the round then we are ready for row number five and you do two chains we turn and now you're going to do a row of double crochets most of them will be under the V just picking up the V as you would normally but of course the chains here from the V stitch make it a little bit more difficult to actually pick up the two uh, strands of the V so what we are going to do is just go into the V stitch so here first of all we start with picking up the two V's then here you go into the chain space into the V's here because you can so two in a row that you can pick up then the third one is around the chain space and so on so you continue like this all along your line and this is the last row of your repeat so to speak so then after you have done that you are back to doing this one here the two double crochets together then you do the double crochets clusters again v-stitch double crochets and so on so this way you keep repeating this row of four different stitches which in my mind kind of follow each other quite logically because you know what else would you do sometimes you have the chain spaces to go into so you go into there um, sometimes like here you know you have a chain space to go into so you go into there here you have a space between the clusters so let's put a cluster there you know so I thought this was quite a logical way of um, you know building up a stitch repeat so here at the end do one in that last stitch but then also you know that you've got to do one in that turning chain or that last stitch there okay so make sure you keep on doing your edge stitches your border stitches because you will need those later on for creating your side borders of course we've already done the bottom border and we will end in this as well so that will give us 
both the top and the bottom border we will just have to do the side borders so now you are going to repeat this stitch repeat so row two three four and five you keep on repeating those I repeated them 12 times so that gave me with this row here 49 rows to do and it was very manageable although the rows were long I didn't mind so much because I just did them um, and each row was a different thing to do and it made it sort of so much fun almost because uh, some rows would go a little bit quicker than others but even so I thought it was a great project to do so I will see you now when you have done 49 rows and that will make sure that you end in a row of double crochets <music> Okay, so you are now back here for doing the border. So do not cut off your yarn because we are going to turn this last stitch here into a corner. So you add another double crochet, a chain and another two double crochets into that same location. And look at that you've made a corner. Now you are going to go along the side and you're going to put double crochets around the bodies of your double crochets that you have here into it you know wherever you can manage it but try not to put too many okay so I've put one there into the hole then I'm going to put one here where the sort of two stitches meet one around the body here Again here, where the stitches meet, one around, less is more, okay? We're doing a border in double crochet, so we need to just make sure that we don't put too many in there so you don't get a wavy border. And if you, yeah, that's okay there. Of course, these are the two shorter sides, so you won't need to you know it's not going to be your long side that you're doing this so it is manageable to do this right so now we get here I am now sort of in that same location already for that first stitch that we've got here so I'm going to do another one in there a chain then I'm going to do another one oops yeah a little bit careful and then you're going to turn your work go under this strand that's left here do a slip stitch there we are and that is your corner made and your border on the side made as well so you cut off your yarn and then you're going to do the same thing here so you're going to get started by going under here and you pull up a loop as if you were already crocheting and there was already a loop there yarn over and then into that same location so have a look where this sort of chain is coming out where you can go into yeah I think that's okay and do a second double crochet then you do a chain and then you do two more double crochets into that same location one two and another one here there we go okay and you've made a corner same thing here you're going to put your double crochets where you think they would you know be placed logically not too many not too few and then at the end You'll be putting your stitch in with that last stitch that you've got there, or the first one, depending on how you look at it. So two stitches there, a chain and another double crochet. And then once again here, you sort of skip the actual stitch, go under the V here. If you can manage to get under that, there we go. And you do a slip stitch. There we are. 
and this way you have finished your poncho all you need to do then is put your bottoms on okay so where are we going to sew on our buttons so this is the first 50 centimeters of one side and that's where you're going to put your buttons okay you just need them on one side and the first 50 centimeters so i've got six buttons so i've put one at 50 40 30 20 10 and then at one at sort of zero there okay and that's where i'm going to sew them on measure about 50 centimeters and another 50 centimeters so about a meter worth of yarn cut it off and then thread on your needle and then bring the two ends together so you have double strand i do believe in uh you know using double strand when i'm putting on buttons <laughs> and then um you know sort of at about the mark 110 20 here i am going to attach the button around this little v here so i'm going to go in the v pull up my yarn and i'm going to leave out a good amount about sort of you know seven ten centimeters because obviously you want to sew this in then i'm going to take my button go through the holes come back out the other side there we go and I'm going to lay it on there. And as you can see, these are sort of at an angle. So I'm going to try and achieve that with this one as well. Go back into that V and come back up. Holding on to the end here because you might pull it all out if you're not careful. There we go. Okay. And then you go back under the button. And you go back into the fabric through the other hole. There we are might not be easy but that's okay there we are and another go another go through the hole of the button so it's nice and tight there and i've been doing that three times so I've gone through it three times and then i turn it round and i just sew in like i usually do making lots of twists and loops so that it's really nicely attached and generally yeah I do try and use up most of the length of yarn that I have here they are not going to come undone <laughs> oh dear there we go okay so cut this off and then come back here you're going to have to sew this in And I take it to the back and then I sew it in. Could have left it a little bit longer, but there you go. See? So you do this in two goes, secures it even more, and then this one as well. And you do that obviously for all your six buttons. Now we did not make buttonholes because we have the openings in between the V stitches that we are going to be using for our buttonholes so I will show you how to close it in a moment so to close up your poncho you start on the edge and you take your uh, button side and you sort of fold the other side over and you go in between that V stitch is there and then you do the same here and you sort of use the V stitch that sort of is the closest to the button there we go and you keep going and so you can wear this sort of like a poncho but also just like a scarf so that you don't have to have the buttons done up they can just be there basically and so here we have the last one and then of course this is the opening for your head so there are various ways of wearing it here i am wearing it as a poncho with the buttons running over my left arm 
but of course you can also wear the line of buttons down your front and then you have it like almost like a cardigan with just the shawl at the back And then of course you could also undo the buttons and just wear it as a nice big and cuddly shawl. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Before you go, please like and share this video. Ring the bell so you're notified of new videos. Join our community on Facebook and here are some more videos you might find interesting. Thank you so very much for watching and come back soon. Bye!